Sean, is Isaac from my office uh, logged in? I don't see him. Good morning, okay. everyone. That's Councilman Lavar. Good morning, everyone. We are on the record. Today is Tuesday, July 6, 2021. This is a virtual budget hearing for the mayor's office and cultural affairs. In effort to adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by the city and state authorities, the city of Jersey City has canceled all public meetings and closed non-essential services as of March 16, 2020 until further notice. As a result, this virtual budget hearing will be hold, held virtually as a video conference with public access. We had a scheduled 9 a.m. start. The clock on my computer is showing 9.03 a.m. May I have a roll call for the commencement of this virtual hearing. And I see we have Councilperson Lavaro present and Council President Waterman present. I don't believe I missed anyone. Um, OK, in addition, at its time of its preparation, the notice of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, July 2nd, 2021 at 1 p.m to the mayor, business administrator, corporation council, and the local newspapers and posted on the city's website. And so I can certify to our total compliance with the Sunshine Law. We also have present from the mayor's office, Emily Waller, and the director of cultural affairs, uh, Christine Goodman. We also have Kyle Greaves present. Carmen Gandular is on the call. Uh, Desiree from the Council office is also on the call. And I believe I'm going to turn it over to the council president at this point. OK, thanks a lot, Sean. You're so welcome. Um, just, just take it from the top with your presentations. But I ask you guys when you have presentations, just send it to us and your organizational charts. OK, so we'll have them. So uh, I don't know who's going to go first. Emily, you want to start? Absolutely. Um, okay. Our budget is combined, so we will. We will do this together. Here we go. OK, so um, thank you all for for seeing us today I'm going over our budget. Um, so this is the overview of what the mayor's office and cultural affairs does. Um, the mayor's office is the executive branch of our local government with about 10 employees led by John Manila. The mayor's office coordinates and collaborates with each department and agency across the city, as well as with city council. The mayor's office confers with residents, local businesses, and other key stakeholders as to set forth various policy, laws, and regulations to move the city forward. Christine, would you like to say a brief statement on um, cultural affairs? Sure. So the second office under the mayor's office is cultural affairs and is one of the most culturally diverse cities in the nation. Jersey City has a vibrant arts and culture scene that grows stronger with each passing year. The Office of Cultural Affairs is responsible for coordinating and executing numerous art fairs, cultural festivals and flag raisings uh, performing arts events and more that happen throughout the city. Thank you. Um, so this is just a brief overview of our um, budget and staff totals over the past few years. Um, this is a um, sort of brief overview of our organizational chart um, and then the following slides get into a little bit more detail. Um, Previously, we had had um, the RRC under the mayor's office as well, but over the last year it was moved into um, public safety under the quality of life division. This is the organizational chart for the mayor's office. Um, under the mayor is uh, Chief of Staff John Manila. Um, mayor Fulop works directly with Nancy Warlikowski, who is his aide and scheduler. Um, she oversees Jayla, who is the mayor's executive assistant, and Iman Das, the receptionist. Um, John Manila recently brought on Usha, or Usharani, 
Um, she is his ex executive assistant, works on his calendars, as well as um, attends his meetings. Um, I am Emily Waller. I work it as um, John's deputy or um, a senior aide to the mayor. I do a lot of personal work, um, as well as any projects that pop up that need um, immediate assistance. Bridget Custode has stepped into um, the role of Lenora Brown, who left us over the last year. Um, she's our office manager, as well as our um, Oprah liaison, um, and she assists with various things throughout the office. Um, we have Deja Anderson, Phil Orfanides, and Vernon Richardson. Each of them are aides to the mayor who work on various projects throughout the city. For the cultural affairs org chart, um, I'm the director of cultural affairs and we've split it into the various um, focus areas of the office, starting with Bethune Center. We have Alvin Pettit, who is the director. And under Alvin, we have Helen Hinton, Florence Holmes and Nakia Wiggins and um, Tyquel Halley is also uh, he assists with the fiscal end of uh, the programming and other fiscal needs out of Bethune Center. Under Apple Tree, we have a part time employee, Gretchen von Koenig, who was a seasonal who became uh, part time over the last year. In our permitting department, which handles all permitting for special events on public property, we have Christopher Pellegrino, who is our program coordinator with Leotis Clyburn and Tristan Mathis managing the DocuSign permitting process. <clears throat> For our uh, marketing and outreach, Lisa Catania is our program development specialist. Under our events, Jujo Canol, Mara Jewel Canol uh, runs our flag raisings and all events that happen within City Hall. Greg Bricky is our exhibition arts specialist who manages all of our visual arts presentations across all our facilities. Glenn Lutman is our audio visual specialist. He does all of the AV for all um, press events and any uh, uh, audio that's needed for any of our public events. <clears throat> Jalen Haynes and Dominique Pollard are, are on the ground uh, recreation aides um, and they do all event support for festivals, uh, special events presented out of my office. Recently in this year, we, we welcomed in the <clears throat> Jersey City Mural Arts Program led by Brooke Hansen with her um, assistant director, Claudia Ciaccio. And then in the director's office, we have Catherine Deadweiler, who manages the fiscal and the HR needs um, directly for the Office of Cultural Affairs. Um, a brief overview of our um, department. The mayor's office is responsible for communicating with departments on key city initiatives. We coordinate with key partners inside and outside the city on matters of importance. Uh, we coordinate with the Department of Public Safety, Office of Emergency Management, the Department of Health and Human Services to help manage emer emergencies and help educate the public. This was especially important over the last year. Um, and we work with the business administrator to manage the city's priorities. For cultural affairs, we facilitate special events uh, across all of our public property, uh, including streets and parks. Um, we also partner with organizations in various ways for making sure that their events are successful. Um, and we do also message out to the public about the programs, the arts programs that are presented to the uh, for the public out of our office. Um, we manage the permitting to make sure that all of the property uh, and permits are in place for safe use of um, our public property. We have our own programming out of the Apple Tree House and the Bethune Center, as well as programs that we present out of City Hall. 
And we create and maintain relationships with arts and cultural groups and organizations throughout the city with the greater goal of promoting arts and culture across Jersey City. Um, our key initiatives has, uh, over the past year have been to vaccinate Jersey City residents. Um, we've been investing in our parks. We have been enhancing Jersey City's transportation network with the regional connectivity and greater access. Um, we've been creating permanent solutions for people that are homeless and people that are at risk of being homeless. We've been uh, working towards creating a hub of art, art and culture in the Journal Square area, um, especially with the partnership of the Centra Pompidou um, and our planned improvements to the Lowe's Theater. We have built, we have broken ground on the first comprehensive public safety headquarters in Jersey City in the Jackson Square um, Municipal Hub. And we are working towards combating climate change with our energy action plan. And um, we're creating New Jersey's first municipal arts and culture trust fund. Um, some key performance indicators that we thought were um, important on the work that we were doing. Um, 70% of Jersey City residents have been vaccinated as of last week, and nearly 75% of police officers throughout all ranks are representing um, our diverse city. So that is something that we're excited about. Um, Christine, would you like to go into your KPIs? Sure. Um, 2020 into early 2021 saw the majority of our event organizers coming to cultural affairs trying to navigate the changing landscape of COVID and how to have safe events, if events were possible, uh, what guidance was coming out of the governor's office, how to adapt to that. Uh, and so our office really played that role of um, communicating to organizers, helping them through uh, how the, the whole process of how to present safe events, some of which happened. Um, many of which were postponed, but all of which needed those conversations to help talk through what was possible to present to the public and what was not because of the um, because of the coronavirus. So out of the 200 event organizers that we directly engaged with to help through that process, we had 36 park events, um, 30 special events, six farmers markets, six procession, and five city events and these were all under uh, very strict COVID precautions and within the gathering limits that were allowed um, through the governor's executive order. For city hall events we pivoted to have 27 virtual flag raisings because we could not gather and do the um, presentations, the cultural presentations in chambers that, that we so much enjoy. So we did make those flag raisings viewable for the public in, uh, virtually. And then we were able to have nine visual art exhibitions inside of City Hall. And we also paired those with virtual exhibitions for the public to be able to walk through um, in the virtual realm. We had uh, lectures, uh, nine lectures at Apple Tree House. 10 virtual public meetings with the arts community as we're navigating through this new process of the Arts and Culture Trust Fund. We welcomed a new poet laureate, Rescue Poetics, this year. We had three virtual class series presented at the Bethune Center. Again, the Bethune Center pivoting due to COVID, taking their in-person classes online. We had 63 virtual segments that were hosted online. In 2020, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of the Jersey City Art Studio Tour, which we felt was a very important year to um, not pass over because of coronavirus. So we did uh, have an online exhibition where people were able to take virtual tours of all the participants who signed up for uh, JCAS Live. And this was an unprecedented year for having our parks and our libraries participate in JCAST with walk-by exhibitions that could be viewed on the outside of our, our parks and libraries, drawing uh, over 2,000 attendees. And 87% of the artists that participated uh, reported a positive experience with that festival, which was wonderful for us because it was so it was such a new approach. We had 45 city department uh, events that we supported the cultural affairs providing support for other public facing initiatives. 
and 82% um, of the cultural affairs staff provided uh, support during the um, pandemic response. So some of the goals that we had in 2020 were um, that we were working to assist the residents of Jersey City through the COVID-19 pandemic by assisting with budget management, taking appointments for COVID testing, contact tracing, etc. We assisted with the reorganization of city staff to accommodate the needs of city residents during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, specifically making sure Meals on Wheels was fully staffed, um, making sure our uh, contact tracing team was fully staffed, etc. Um, we utilized RAVE to send out alerts to city employees and city residents to communicate urgent matters um, of health and safety. We broke ground on the new public safety headquarters and the municipal annex. Um, we assisted with the closing of food and equity gaps for over 3,000 youth with the Summer Food Service Program. And we completed a 24-month roadmap to address immediate challenges facing the arts and culture sector. Um, our 21 goals, I am very happy to announce that as of last week, we reached our 70% goal of um, Jersey, City, Jersey City residents um, vaccinations. Um, we are working towards transforming the Bergen Lafayette Park to increase recreational space and safety for local residents. We are continuing to improve transit infra infrastructure we are working towards the development of a strong and supportive cultural center in the Journal Square area. Um, we are launching free immigration medical exams and legal services for Jersey City refugees and asylees. Um, we are continuing the food service program um, to make sure Jersey City youth have access to healthy meals all summer. And we are launching the first grant cycle of the Arts and Culture Trust Fund. Um, this is our mayor's office budget. Would you like me to pause here? Okay. This is the cultural affairs budget. Would you like me to pause here? Oh, here we go. We're back. <laughs> um, would, would you like me to pause here or here? Yeah. Is there any questions on this part? What they presented? Good, good morning. I um my councilman Robinson, I got here just a little late, about nine ten. Um, did we go over any like improvements or any, I guess, anything that we're gonna do for the Baton Center? I know we have like the cultural arts center and stuff going in Jerome Square and we do have that arts fund, but is there did you guys speak about anything about the Baton Center yet? So um I can actually send you um, a more comprehensive report specifically related to the Bethune Center and what we focused on in 2020. Because there was no in-person programming, we took that time to do a lot of improvements within the Bethune Center, putting in theater seats, repainting, doing a lot of um, that internal uh, work, which also was wonderful once we started doing the, the vaccines and the COVID testing out of Bethune. So um, I can send you that, which really details, it's about five or six pages in depth of the Bethune right. work. Thanks, Director. Mm -hmm. um, Milan, do you have any questions? Um, sorry, I was just listening, so I didn't really get to see what the presentation, but um, okay. was that presentation shared with everybody at this point or? No, they'll share it. I told, I asked for all the pre presentations. Um, so they'll send it, don't worry. Okay, just, just one question then uh, from what I was listening to, um, uh, I think it was Emily, I guess, was speaking about um, the vaccination effort um, and saying that um, as of today it was 70%. Um, a report I recently read said it was around, and I don't have that report in front of me, 64%. Um, could you provide that data? And then it actually said if that's for 18 and older, 64%, that, that was a news story. I just read it this weekend. Um, and then it was, uh, then they dropped to 52% when you factor in 12 years old and up. Um, can, can you provide us your data with regard to your 70%? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll send that over. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Let me, oh, let me go ask, back. Um, I'm sorry, Council President, can I ask, um, do, do we have any information? I think one of the things that uh, was important that the mayor's office took a lead on was the census. Um, any information or updates on where that stands and uh, um, where it's going from here? So um, we did receive numbers for the state and overall the state did very well. We were able to keep all of our uh, con congressional seats. We did not gain any, unfortunately. Um, but we have not received data on individual municipalities as soon as um, Deja Anderson, who took the lead on the census last year, as soon as she gets that data, she will be sending it out to everyone. We're very excited to hear because um, we were pretty aggressive during the pandemic to make sure that we got that out everywhere. So we're hopeful. So speak, mm -hmm. speaking of the census, um, I guess, what, is there a timeline, like maybe a month, six months or anything to see some numbers? And when we think about the COVID vaccinations, it's the 64, 68%, 70%. Um, is that based on, you know, previous data? Because I know we have a lot of like homeless people around the city that's outside. And do we have any like idea how many homeless people we, we were able to vaccinate? Um, I will reach out to Director Flanagan and get as detailed information as I can from her. Mm -hmm. um, what percent of the percentage of the homeless population we were able to vaccinate? Mm -hmm. I know that that's a tricky number to sort of let me ask this question when i could you go back like to the organizational chart when i looked at culture affairs organizational chart versus the uh, mayor's office organizational chart when it comes to the mayor office organizational chart he has like three um if you want to call them executive leadership that kind of help the mayor's office but when i looked at culture affairs organizational chart um, she doesn't have anyone. It's just her. See, it's pretty, pretty much just Christine. She doesn't have like a, a assistance or anything that that can help her. Are we thinking about putting someone or two other people there? Because she's she's on she's on top, and so Christine gets all. Seem like to me she gets all of the the stress. You know, she doesn't have no one else that they that the staff can go to. They go directly to her. Are we looking into something like that? Because I see with the mayor's organizational chart, he has three executive directors across, like, you know what I'm saying? That does different things, but it helps. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I think she needs more help here. That's just me looking. I'm looking at an organizational chart. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Council President. Uh, it's John, sorry. Um, I guess for the mayor's office, it's a little more of a uh, wide scope because uh, they're interacting with all the city's agencies and departments uh, on a daily basis, where right. uh, where Director Goodman is kind of specific in her uh, her cultural and uh, organizational uh, leadership uh, through those programming. But uh, we could always entertain discussing with uh, Director Goodman if there's somebody that's worthy of a promotion or you know if there's a change in her organizational chart, we're happy to discuss that. Yeah, because she's going to need it. I mean, this city, we have more activity now than ever. You, you could see it. I, I mean, just think about how many events that they plan, how many events they partner with. I mean, it seemed like that department, you know, it, it's it looks like a lot on paper, but it's not a lot on staff. And so to me, it's like the staffing is going to get burnt out if she doesn't have, um, if she doesn't increase her staff, to be perfectly honest, especially on top. Because it's just her. I, I I can't. That's just me. I just can't see it. I don't know what the other council people feel like, but I'm looking at it, and it's and the city is growing. Uh, it, I think she needs more help. That's me. I do because I'm out there and I'm seeing all the work they do. Yep, uh, Councilman, that's a good point. And uh, just as we go through the uh, budget hearings, uh, one of the things that uh, we've been doing, uh, HR and administration have been combined. Uh, having meetings uh, usually weekly or bi-weekly to uh, take a look at each division's organizational charts within the city and determine mm -hmm. uh, what the best uh, function uh, would be. And that's how we kind of came across the idea of uh, we have the second reading uh, ordinance for uh, 
payroll and purchasing to kind of get uh, switched over in departments because it just mm -hmm. made more sense when we reviewed those. So we're going division by division throughout the city and uh, and we'll definitely take a look at Christine's when we bring her in. Right. I think she needs more. I do. I see what they do is just too much. That staff is burnt out. It is. OK, now you can go into descriptions if you like. You know, any questions on the description, guys? I'm not sure what you're referring to as descriptions. Oh, you button. know what it is, though? I'm looking in the. Um, I'm looking in the budget book. The budget book. That's why. Are we going into the budget book at this point? That well, I mean, that's what that's what we have. Yeah. <laughs> that's our guideline. So I, I'm sticking with that. Go ahead, um, Emily. You have anything um, else? When it comes to like communications, you know, training, you know, I'm looking at different things, salaries, office supplies, you know, anything in that wise. That's what I'm looking at, guys. If I may ask, then if um, just stuff like that, just go ahead. The, there were, uh, sorry, by my account, um, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, salary increases. Um, I just, uh, can you can you speak to the salary increases and um, I believe they for many of them it was indicating merit increases. Um, they're, they're fairly in, in some cases fairly substantial increases. Um, so can you explain and speak to those uh, increases within the mayor's office? I should say more specifically. Um, quite a few people take on new responsibilities in our office. Um, so Bridget Custode has taken on um, a lot with the um, Ms. Brown leaving. Um, I'm just looking here. Jayla has been learning more and more of our operations. Uh, she has taken on a lot more responsibility. Um, I, as you know, um, when Allison left, took on a lot more responsibility. I've been assisting um, in various things that have otherwise Sorry, I have I, um, on. I, something's wrong with my feed, maybe, or is it on your side? I'm not sure. Which, uh, Sorry. I'm not hearing anything. Is anyone else hearing it? Getting a response, hearing the response? I heard a response. Um, OK, so it's just me. So overall, um, uh, Councilman Lavaro, um, it has been that people have been taking on new responsibilities. Um, again, with um, Ms. Brown leaving, a lot of her responsibilities have spread through the office to other members of our staff. Um, and I have taken on a lot of the responsibilities that um, I had not previously. If there's anybody that you have a specific question about, let me know. Um, I'm just what, what's the what's what, what's the process by which you determine um, um, in your not just in your office but in other offices as well. I guess if um, and I haven't gone through every department. I've just gotten through today, frankly. Um, well, what's the process by which you determine uh, merit increases? Um, uh, so, Councilman, in large part, we've gotten away from the uh, merit increases. Um, what we usually either do is either a change in responsibilities and uh, an upward um, either civil service uh, title or, or organizational title. A higher uh, union or they get uh, become management employees with more responsibilities and uh, you know, it, it's always tied to additional functions or resources. And with uh, three buyouts over the last three years, um, we have lost a significant amount of senior employees that either uh, more less senior employees have stepped up and taken on uh, those roles or have increased their responsibilities, uh, or, you know, within their uh, division uh, to create um, a cost savings for the city. Um, and in order to accomplish that, sometimes they need an adjustment in their salaries.
someone else? Sorry, I, I was saying um, five of the six um, salary increases in, indicate uh, merit increases. So you're suggesting that there's um, a change in responsibilities. Um, if you could just share with me any documentation related to their what their pr prior responsibilities are and the current responsibilities are, um, so as to indicate the, the merit increase. And then in one case, the justification indicates salary ordinance. Um, that's for the chief of staff. Um, <coughs> or am I reading that wrong? That's aid to the mayor. Aid to the mayor is the title. Um, what salary ordinance as a justification? So I don't recall us doing an ordinance change on aid to the mayor, or did, did we do that? Um, I don't believe there's a uh, chief of chief of staff civil service title, so aid to the mayor is um, what I have on 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 record. But um, that should be in, I believe, the January ordinance. The January there was a January ordinance that increased that salary. I, I believe so. Uh, could I could I get a copy of that ordinance? I don't recall. Uh, a vote on changing salary for any. Yep. Um, and then I think it indicates as well that there's a, a VSIs, which is voluntary separation incentive. Is that correct? Is that the acronym? Right. Could I get a list of um, not just for this um, office, but for the entire city, um, the list of all employees who took the 2020 voluntary separation incentive and what their salaries were um, at the time of the uh, um, and the data that which they voluntarily separated from the organization. In addition, there was one employee that uh, indicated a resignation in 2020. Um, if I could get the uh, also a list of all employees who've resigned as of January 1st, 2020 through today's date, the date of their mm -hmm. resignation as well, um, as well as their salaries. Yep, I have to, I'll have HR on a report, but I'm pretty sure they have that um, VSI data shared already with the council, but so I'll just have them send that back and uh, generate a report for everything else for any type of separation. OK, similarly, um, I it indicates to me that there's. Um, one transfer that's Mr. Richardson. Um, if I get a list of all transfers as well, both in 2020 to date, um, January 1, 2020 through to today. Uh, and um, where they were coming from, where they're going to, as well as their salaries, both in at their previous position when they were where they originated and where they were transferred to. Yep. Um, and let, let me ask you um, to, to the BA, I guess, uh, at the BA. Um, the mayor's salary is fixed. Um, if I recall the um, um, the law that was enacted tied the uh, mayor's salary to um, the law of the salary of the county executive. Uh, and I believe that they recently enacted a uh, change in um, their salaries as well. Um, yeah, uh, Councilman, we'll get a copy of that ordinance as you requested, but uh, it's from my uh, knowledge, just speaking now, that uh, it's tied to the uh, county executive effective 2022, but I'll, I'll verify that prior to. Uh, Good. Thank you. Yeah. And then could you just speak to the swap from Chad Johnstone to Phil Lefernatis between the JCRA? So um, Chad had interest in working in the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency and 
Phil was interested in returning to the mayor's office. He has a lot of experience in the mayor's office and um, especially with the projects that Chad was working on, we felt like it would be a good switch. And so far it has proven to be. We're back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I lost my connection at some point or something happened. No, we all lost it at a moment, Rolando. We all. So go ahead and explain um, again the chat. Um, so Chad was interested in um, projects that were going on over at the JCRA. And at the same time, Phil um, stated interest in returning to the mayor's office. He was previously in the mayor's office um, and stated interest in returning. Um, based on the projects that Chad was working on, um, it seemed to be a, a good even um, transfer. So we moved ahead with it. We like to give people opportunities to do things that they want to do. So it worked. I see. Does that answer that question? It does. Thank you. Someone else? Any more? This is it. Okay. No more questions. May, may I just you ask? Um, Go ahead. You finished your presentation, um, right? Emily and um, Christine. There was okay. one final slide um, just going over um, changes in cultural affairs, but it was previously touched upon. Mm -hmm. so. OK. So, so you may have touched upon this when I when when I was on earlier by phone, but um, the office supplies this is seeing a um, increase uh, more than double an increase in the office supplies. Um, similarly with the uh, communications um, and dues and subscriptions. Can you just speak to those changes? Uh, Council, you'll, you'll see a lot of um, offices with um, increases to office supplies just because last year um, that we weren't working from the office, we, um, we cut a lot of those budget lines. Um, mm -hmm. So what the need to, for ordering anything. And um, so that's really why you see some increases there and obviously some some new staff and um, for a mayor's office same thing last year there was no conference of the mayors or league of municipalities so that's a bulk of that increase as well so so the assumption is that 2019 it was higher and then 2020 it was reduced and then um and then therefore you're kind of restoring 2021 to kind of 2019 levels is that accurate for me to su suggest in that way um i wouldn't say just we're not just trying to get back to 2019. We're trying just to get, you know, to whatever numbers needed for this year. So um, I'm assuming they'd be they'd be close, but we're not mirroring any 2019 budget because we're just going based on, you know, what's needed this year. OK, if I could get the um, 2019 numbers for lines two for the mayor's office for lines 201, 302 and um, 306. Appreciate that. And then the other notation I noted in your, your uh, budget book for the mayor was that on the um, as part of the communications, it indicates a seven thousand dollar Wi-Fi installation. All right. Uh, and and wh why is there a seven thousand dollar Wi-Fi installation just for the mayor's office as opposed to kind of the Wi-Fi that we all use here in City Hall? Uh, I believe there are issues with a lot of the. Um communications that the mayor's office was putting out, maybe like Facebook Live and stuff like that, where um, you know the, the feeds were crashing and stuff of that nature. Maybe Emily knows a little bit more, but um, they needed to make some improvements there. And um, there's still money in IT for other citywide needs. And this was just one thing we isolated in the mayor's office kind of early on in the year to, you know, to get it done because it was an immediate need, especially during the early months in the year when we we're still doing some COVID uh, outreach and stuff of that nature. Um, as we 
as COVID got worse and worse, we felt it necessary for the mayor to put out, um, to both attend meetings from the office, but virtually, and um, for us to put out communications from the office um, virtually. And we were unable to do that with the Wi-Fi that we had. Um, it crashed, as Kyle said. So we had to do something about that in order to be able to put out um, emergency notifications as well as attend meetings that were urgent. So you, you, you've already set this up, uh, you set up your own Wi-Fi in, in the mayor's office, is that? Yes, the Wi-Fi is. Okay. <clears throat> and that's just um, the only one who has access to that Wi-Fi is the mayor's staff and. Um, communications uses it as well. Um, Actually, as I, as I dig more into those line items, as I just mentioned, uh, 201, 302, and 306 here. So according to your budget book, um, you moved the meals and exp food expenses, line 309, into 201. Essentially, that's the source of the increase from 6,000 to 10,000. So you put the food expenses in there um, as opposed to having them in food. Um, is that... Um, um allowable i mean to to put in food as a yeah council yeah. we're just uh we're trying to do away with that um that line item citywide um just to have better oversight of or, you know of what we're spending our dollars on um and anything within that line is for like public meetings uh stuff of that nature so we check i check with purchasing to make sure it's okay um they say it, it's kind of up to us, you know, how we allocate it within the line items. It's it's more for us to provide some additional clarity on what money is being spent on. Um, so, I mean, we kind of appropriate it there because it is for the office. And if, if you want, though, we could always move it back into 309. It's just, we were just, it's a decision that the finance department made is to, to do away with that, uh, that line item. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I either I think it'd be my my personal preference. I don't know about the rest of the council, but that uh, food be um, any food expenses be within the, the line item for for food expenses, so that we have a handle on what that number looks like, kind of citywide. There's always every year the uh, the best practices survey, which uh, indicates whether or not you're spending money on food, and so um, um, it's good to indicate that. Um, so that we have transparency on that that matter as well, and it doesn't get buried away kind of in the numbers. Um, there, the line there, there is um there is only a few offices where we um let that line active, which is obviously the council office because you know public meetings, um our boards and agencies that we budget for, and um you know recreation for end of beer events for the the camp um, participants and counselors, but um. If you want, we could always, you know, make that slight amendment and it doesn't affect the budget. The bottom line is still the same. So we'll just reappropriate it to the 309 for you. OK. Yeah. And then j just the last thing here is um, on line 306. It's indicating um, almost a little over nine thousand dollars for the New Jersey League of Municipalities. Um, can, can you speak to that as to what, uh, um, what what's being spent here? Um, I'll, I'll get you the backup from from uh, Bridget, who does the uh, requisition for the mayor's office, and uh, I'll let you know who the registrations refer and whatever else that includes. If you could provide a detail, because in the past, again, we didn't we didn't cover for things like hotel or right. other related expenses, just registration fees. So correct. Yeah, Councilman, I believe that's still the case. Uh, as Kyle indicated, he'll get the uh, backup on it, but. Um, that invoice is usually tied to an assessment of uh, the city based on population. Uh, so the number, you know, changes a little bit with the uh, each year when we have the community survey. So it'll be a little higher than it was in 2019. But again, we'll provide that back up. So let me ask the council. Um, so you guys agree with the uh, food expenses with a separate line item instead of it, instead of it being included with the um, office supplies, correct? Yeah, I think that's a smart move to keep it separate. Okay. Denise, Jermaine? Yeah, I think that's good. I think it's good to break it out. 
Okay. All right, Kyle. So and, and Council President, we all, agree, I will. we all agree to break it up. You got it. And Council President, if I uh, could take one step further and suggest that any uh, divisions that do not have dollars budgeted in that line item to be removed from each one of their departments. So there's not Correct. enough to spend out of it. Correct. All right. Any more questions? OK, that's it. Thank you, guys. Please send us the presentations. Thanks, OK, thank you. Thank you. Sean. Okay. Before, before we end, uh, I just want to mark for the record, Councilperson Robinson arrived at 910, Councilperson Ridley arrived at 911, and Councilperson Prinzari arrived at 917. So we had five council members present at 917. And may I have a motion to adjourn at 940? Um, yes, before you, before you close out, just um, since we're, we're going back in through the same link for future uh, budget hearings here. Yep. Okay, so we're not overriding or, or, or re re recording over past sessions, correct? No, this is okay. this is blocked for the entire time from 9 a.m. till um, uh, actually 3.30. Right. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, um, a sign put up um, in, you know, in between the um, breaks that there is a there's a break in between and the municipal right. budget hearing will uh, continue shortly. Great. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So may I have a motion to adjourn at 949 p.m. Motion a.m. I'm Second. sorry. Oh, I'm so used to saying p.m. Motion made by Council Second. President Waterman. I think the second was already made by Council Person Prince Airy. On the motion to adjourn, at 9.49 a.m. All council members present by acclamation, please say aye. 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 We are out of here at 9.49 a.m. We will be back with the budget virtual budget hearing of the public library starting at 11 a.m. Thank you very much. And we will be uh, on a break until 11 a.m. We will resume at 11 a.m. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.